So I want you to watch Grace and Truth in action. I was, I was praying about where do we go with this? And the Holy Spirit took me back <laughs> to, to over a decade ago when he began to reveal grace to me. And I, I used to read the Bible left to right. That was the only way I would read it. And I took great pride in finishing it, you know, several times a year. Um, I don't even know how many times I read it through left to right. And so I read everything. There was not a scripture in there I hadn't read, you know, 15 times. And probably not too many of them I hadn't preached because I'd been in ministry at that point like 15 years almost. And I remember the day the Holy Spirit, I was reading the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians, and I remember, and I wrote a chapter about this in my first book, the scripture that changed my life. I remember that moment where I read Paul, All Things Are Lawful, and I, I just remember it being this song in my spirit. That's the way I describe it. It's like there was music began to play, and I, but it was, an, it was an unusual music. It was like this thing that you knew was, you knew it was real, but you didn't, you didn't know if it belonged to you. Probably kind of like being a songwriter and you get a melody and you know it's great, but it's too good. You know, like it's so good, you know you've heard it before. <laughs> so you call all your musician buddies and go, let me hum this to you and tell me. And you're praying, please say you've never heard it, please say you've never heard it. Because <laughs> you know you got a winner, but then they sing it back to you and it was so and so. And you go, eh. <laughs> Drats. Um, that was the way I felt. Like you heard this music and you know it's real. Um, and so I want to take you there because I want to show you how Paul gets into that. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9. I want to show you grace and truth in action. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, I want to lead you up to that verse. And I just for full disclosure, I don't think I've ever seen it this way. I don't think I've ever seen this illustration this way till this week. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators or adult, idolaters or adulterers or homosexuals or sodomites or thieves or covetous of drunkards or revilers or extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Every one of these are... Uh, start over. Righteous, the unrighteous will not inherit. Paul's definition of righteous versus unrighteous is not what you do. It is who you are. Okay, so start there. So the unrighteous can never walk into the fullness of their inheritance of the kingdom. What do unrighteous people look like? Well, oftentimes unrighteous people will be fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, etc., 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 etc. He lists a bunch because he wants you to know the list is endless. If he lists like two, you could go, hmm, there's a couple things you shouldn't do. By listing a crazy amount, Paul is saying, here's some junk that comes out of unrighteous people that don't know who they are in Christ, and they don't know their place in the kingdom. Okay? And such were some of you. This is what who this is not just what you used to do. This is who you used to be. What are you now? Unrighteous. What were you then? Fornicators. You may be a righteous person that commits fornication now. He's about to take you there at the end of chapter 6, by the way. But you're not a fornicator. You're righteous. There's a difference. Such were some of you now, I want to slow down there because I said you might be a righteous person that commits fornication now. And somebody hearing that goes, well, man, that should be qualified. Shouldn't they stop being that? Great question. And that's where Paul's going. You were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Holy Spirit. He did the work. Next verse. All things are lawful for me, but I, all things are not helpful. All things are lawful, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And this is the connection I think the Holy Spirit showed me. Paul just showed you grace and truth in action. See, grace is that you have been declared righteous independent of your works. And the faster you remember who you are, the faster you'll stop wanting some of the foolishness you used to want. Don't be defined by that foolishness because you're not what you do. You are who you are. You hear that? You're not what you do. You are who you are. But where's the truth? 
with that grace. The truth is, you can do any of them you want to do. However, the reality is, all of these things are lawful for you to do, but only true liberty, true liberty says, go ahead and do all of them that you want to do. But understand that by doing them, there are things that will happen to you. All things are not helping you. All things, I, I will not be brought under the power of any. There are things you can do in the midst of your righteousness, but the truth is that if you do them, you incur to yourself the inherent chaos that comes by doing them, or you can be who you are and inherit the kingdom. See how Paul led into that? You can be who you are and you'll inherit the kingdom. You are righteous. If you want to go out and act like you're not, you have liberty to do that. But the truth is, there's some stuff you can do that are going to, that's going to own you. You're going to be brought under its power. It's not going to be brought under your power. Now you need to determine who you are. Are you one of the sons of God? Then this, this crap should be beneath you. And if you want to keep fornicating and being an idolater and list off all of the junk plus anything else you can come up with, if you want to act like that, then you can let all of that crap dominate you. You have that right. Welcome to liberty. Liberty's ugly. Liberty's dangerous. Liberty is often painful. I mean, freedom is a dangerous thing because people get to be free to not like you. They get to be free to treat you bad and they get to be free to badmouth you. 